I have heard from quite a few people this week that they're not feeling very renewed. The truth of the matter is that we are in a time period that's pretty tough right now. For those of you who aren't part of our work community, the flu season has hit us hard. And the number of patients that we're dealing with on a, on a daily basis is just phenomenal. And so I guess even though it's hard to take time to come away, we need it more than ever. And so I'm especially grateful that we have this opportunity. As you know, our theme is listening, and every morning we are taking an opportunity to participate in a listening experience. And this morning, our experience is going to be uh, a piece of music called What a Friend We Have in Jesus, played by Mike Fellman. So listen. Our speakers this week are all participants in our I Am hallway, and that includes both employees and patients. Today, we have the opportunity to listen to an employee. Tad Warku is a nurse in our emergency department. He is also a gifted musician, and he gifts us with his message and music this morning. So we're grateful that he is here. His word on the hallway is, I am visionary. And I hope he'll share some of the stories that give you a glimpse into that part of his life. But before he speaks, our prayer will be offered by Helen Staples Evans, who is our chief nursing officer in the Children's Hospital. Good morning. Let's pray together. Our dear Father, thank you. You have demonstrated that you love to whisper to us and that you love it when we listen and whisper back. Even when we try to run away from our troubles, you will find us. Bless us. Even when we feel most alone, unsure, you find a way to whisper to us, to let us know that you are with us in this place, wherever we are. Help us to listen for that whisper. We know that courage doesn't always roar, Sometimes courage is the whisper, the little voice at the end of the day that says, I'll try again tomorrow, because we have listened. As we listen for your whisper, help us to realize that all the things in this world are gifts and signs of your love to us, given in a whisper of beauty, a love letter from you that we should listen to. Bless us today as we listen to your whisper in our hearts and in our minds. Amen. Thank you, Kathy, for the introduction. Um, I was asked to speak 
on my story on how I've chosen to listen to God in my life. And as I was reflecting on my own story and my own journey, there's a lot of lessons that I've learned up to this point. And uh, as I reflected on it, there's, there's four lessons in particular that I'd like to share with you guys today. The first lesson that I've learned about listening is when you listen, you don't always hear what you want to hear. September 26, 2011, I remember the date like it was yesterday. You see, the next day I had a concert that I would be standing and singing in front of a sold out audience. I should have been excited, but instead I was tossing and turning in bed. It wasn't because I was tired. It literally felt like peace had been removed from me. In that moment, it also felt like I could see into my own future. And as I looked at my future, I saw myself on stages around the world. In my mind, I saw myself accepting awards. And in that moment, I remember vividly thinking to myself, then what? What's next? What else is there? And I had a decision to make in that moment. What would I listen to? On one side, I could have listened to the dream that I had set up for so long that was starting to become a reality. I could continue to go forward with the promise of success and fame, but without the guarantee of peace. And on the other side, I could double down on my relationship that I was gaining with God that came with a giant unknown sticker tag on it. Not sure where this will end up, but I promise wherever it goes, I'll, I'll give you peace. Let me rewind a little bit farther. Three years before that decision, I had graduated from college with a business degree, and after graduating, I decided that my goal was to become a famous musician. I moved from Pacific Union College, the small town in Napa Valley, uh, to San Francisco, and I got into an artist development deal, and I started working on songwriting and, and performing and, and, and just music all around. And during that time, small stages turned into larger stages, small opportunities turned into larger opportunities. And I found myself one step closer to my goal each day. The thing that, one of the things that appealed to me so much about music was I had figured out that music would be the thing for me that could, could make me a somebody. It would make room for me in the world. It would be the thing that I could walk into a room and people would know who I was. I, wouldn't, I, I, I knew it would take me where I wanted to go. And so I connected my value to it. It was the smartest decision I could see. As long as I connected my value to it and sold out a show, I knew I would be valuable. As long as I continued to, con to, to achieve at the highest levels in music, I knew I had seen people, I had met people, I knew what it could do for me. So I connected my value to it. So during that time, I, I did concerts, I practiced, I, I continued to develop in the artist development deal. Uh, but something unexpected happened during that time. I had grown up in a Christian home. I had gone to Adventist schools from kindergarten, preschool, all the way up to college. And then I decided to move to San Francisco to join this artist development deal. And all of a sudden, my environment was expanded overnight. I was no longer surrounded by people that shared the same ideas and values and beliefs. I was surrounded by people that had large amount, amounts of money that had come from all sorts of walks of life. And I started asking myself, where do I fit in this whole thing? Who am I? What do I value? What do I believe? Who am I going to be in this circle? And it wasn't a question I even wanted to ask. I had a single-minded goal, and that was to, to be, become somebody in this world of music. But at the same time, I was like, well, I got to figure out who I am in this world because everything has changed. So during that time, <clears throat> I... I found myself in a familiar place, but, but an unfamiliar place as well. And it was almost an invitation back to figure those questions out. And figuring those questions out for me meant going back and, and really getting to know a personal God. 
I'd grown up hearing about a God, but getting to know the personal God that would help me answer those questions. And as I started reading and praying and studying almost for the first time for those reasons, I started becoming fulfilled in this relationship with God, and it changed something. I started asking. I started praying before some of the large opportunities that I would get with music, and and something strange happened because it almost seemed like the direction that I was going with music started rifting from the direction I was going where God was leading me. I started asking, I started praying and including God in the decisions I was making. And all of a sudden it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, why don't I have, why can't I, this is the best opportunity I've gotten so far with music. Why are you calling me in another direction? You can stay in the passenger seat, but let's, I've, I've set this thing up now. So, so just come with me. Like, don't take that from me. I have a plan for it. I have an idea for it. Just come along and I'll use it for you. Um, but obviously God has uh, different ideas when you, you invite him uh, along for a ride. And so um, during this time, I, I felt the, tight, the line that I was walking uh, turned into a fork in the road. One road was going left, one road was going right, and I couldn't navigate down the tightrope that I had been walking. It felt like God had been calling me to listen and follow him down this way at the same time that some of the largest opportunities were coming together with music. And somehow in my mind, I couldn't reconcile the two together. And all of that came to a head September 26, 2011. I had no peace left. I saw into my future and and I didn't see it working. I saw who I would become years later, and I couldn't go forward knowing that. And that's when I learned lesson number two. Who and what you listen to dictates where you go. That night, I decided between me and God that the show the next day would be my last. I would, I would walk away from music. I had no idea what that meant. I had no plan B. But I decided between me and God that if I could have the peace, I would take that over the success minus the peace. And so I decided that night that that would be my last show. The next day came and went. Mostly uneventfully, the concert went well. Uh, in the back of my head, I was thinking about the decision that I had just made. Uh, and as I continued to move forward, a week went by and and nothing really changed in my head. I continued to, to move forward, but knowing in the back of my head that I had made this decision. And then, unexpectedly, a few weeks later, I got a phone call. And up till that point, I had, to bring you up to current, I, at that point, I had a production company, uh, a full Pop Soul album that was complete. I had tour dates that were ready. Um, and I was waiting for funding. So the phone call that I got that day, unexpectedly, a few weeks after this decision that I made between me and God was, congratulations, all the tour funding that you requested from a grant organization has been approved. So months after that, two weeks after I make this decision, I get a phone call that more money than I'd ever seen in my life was being given to me, not to pay back, but from a grant organization. That sent me back into a tailspin. Did I really hear what I thought I heard? Did I really understand it correctly? Like, or is this God giving it back to me? Is this, is this my opportunity? You see, I, I wasn't a fool, and I understood that opportunities like this barely came around once. To have an award-winning production team, to have an album that was recognized by labels, to have all the money I needed to travel. It, I knew it barely happened once, and I for sure knew it didn't happen twice. And so at this point, I knew it wasn't a decision between me and God. It was a decision that would have to be communicated once I gave it away. How would I tell my team that I'd given away all of our money? How would I tell my team that I canceled an album that they had worked on? How would I cancel all of tour and tell everybody that had watched the journey for six years that all of a sudden I was just done? 
So I started thinking about it, and I started praying about it, and I started seeking advice, and I quickly realized when I was seeking advice that nobody really understood the decision I was making. Um, And that's when I learned lesson number three. Um, During that time, after seeking advice, I realized that this decision was going to be between me and God. There wasn't really anywhere else I I could find the answer to what I was looking for. It was either, it was, it was clear roads for me, either left or right. And so as I, as I kind of retreated into my own space, I started praying and really seeking the voice of God. And, and in that time, I, I, I learned the valuable lesson that God's voice is clearest when everything around you is silent. So during that time, I remember wrestling with everything that I was. If I gave this away, it would create something that I had no idea where it would take me. I already knew where I was going. I had a clear roadmap, and I knew that if I continued and I took the money, something that I had planned for would happen. I also knew if I gave it away that I would never get the opportunity, and who knows what would happen after that. I, there were a few things that stood out in my mind. One, I would probably never be that somebody again. That was my opportunity. So, so as, I, as I went forward, um, I, I, I prayed, and, and in the stillness and in the silence, when everything else was silent, I remember hearing that still, small voice of God saying, follow me, I have something else for me. Give it up to me, I have something else for you. And I remember thinking, wow, are you positive? Are you sure? Like, this is not something I want to come back years later and say, man, I really regret the decision I made, and it's not happening again. And I remember just hearing it over and over. And so I got up, I made the phone calls, and I canceled the, I told them I would, I wouldn't be taking the funding, which meant the album was canceled, which also meant uh, tour was canceled. Uh, At that point, the interesting thing that one interesting thing happened in that point, it was the moment where I'd completely been separated from the thing that I knew would make me. But also what was so interesting in that point is it's, it's the moment I tangibly felt the most peace I've ever experienced. Um, in that moment, I knew I'd be okay even when I had nothing. And so that sent me back into the next phase. What next? What now? What would I do? I knew I had to tell my team, and I figured my team would, it would be a goodbye conversation at that point. So I drove into the studio to tell them, and I, I told them I've chosen to listen to this thing where God is leading, and I've thought about it, and, and this is where I'm going. And I remember the response of my team was, hey, whatever God's put on your heart, we're all on board. If you want to re-record a new album, we'll re-record. If you want to do whatever you want to do, we're on board. And I remember thinking about that uh, and just and, and still wondering, well, I don't have any money. I don't have any songs, so I'm, I, I'm just going to continue at this point. And so at that point, I remember praying and saying, God, I gave you everything that I could have. Uh, I need a door to open. And God is almost comical, but the, a door opened in one of the most unexpected places. Uh, an, a door opened to study nursing. And for anybody who knows, who would have known me before, it was a shock. Nobody, everyone was like, what are you doing? Where are you going with this? Um, But I knew God was leading. And and the interesting thing was, um, just to place you in my mind at that point, um, as a musician and as as an artist, I was the one uh, who was taken care of. Everywhere I went, I was the one that didn't lift a finger. Everybody else helped me. And then I was going into this place where I was the one who helped other people. But I learned a few things during that. During that. And the things that I learned, a few of the things that I learned, uh, the first was humility comes before honor. Uh, the second was in order to be a leader, you have to learn to be a servant. And those are some of the lessons that I learned during that point. And, and that led me to the fourth lesson that I've learned about listening. And lesson number four is the most beneficial thing I've ever done in my life was to listen to where God had led. Uh, Over the past six years, as I reflect on all of the things that I thought would make me a nobody, I've 
I've watched God put it all back together. All of the things that I thought would never come back together, I've seen God place his hand on them and bring all of it back into existence. I've seen, I've traveled, my, my dream was to travel and to experience the world and to sell out shows, and I've stood on larger s- stages than I could have ever imagined after leaving. What I learned about f- listening to God was he didn't make me a nobody. He preserved the fact that I would be a somebody. Uh, not only did he not take music, he preserved it in a way that would, it would never be taken from me again. All of the opportunities that I saw, all of the travels that I saw, all of the stages that I stood on, it showed me, my mind over the past six years has been blown by how God leads and what he gives to the people. It says, seek first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness and and its righteousness and all of these things will be added. It's interesting because the things don't matter so much at this point, but they still are given. Um, During that whole during that whole phase, I remember um, I started writing music again. And one of the songs I wrote was around the time of September 26, 2011. And in that point, I remember this song that I wrote. It was called Me. And the idea was I was this kid that was chasing something that had, an op- that had a fork in the road. And I could become two different people, two different old people. I could be one person that went left, and I could be one person that went right. And so I wrote the song about, about that, and I just want to tell you the lyrics, and then I want to sing the song. Um, but the lyrics are, I met a young man, and I heard him say, I'm heading to the top, I'm on my way. A one-way ticket and a heart of steel. He traded love for an empty deal. And love he tried to find, but his heart he sold and he left behind. And though he couldn't see... He'd say, I gained the world. What I lost was me. I met an old man, and I heard him say, I wish I knew then what I know today. I'd save my heart. I wouldn't go so fast. I'd tell the young man that he was my past, and the, and the heart he left behind will soon be the thing that he tries to find. And though he couldn't see, he'll say, I gained the world. What I lost was me. I met another old man, and I saw him smile. He looked my way, said he walked this mile. He said, keep coming, don't you turn astray, and never, ever trade your love away. Because then you'll find the key. Love is the one who will set you free. And in the end, you'll see. You'll say, I lost the world. What I found was me. I met a young man and I heard him say I'm heading to the top, I'm on my way A one-way ticket and a heart of steel He traded love for an empty deal And love he tried to find But his heart he sold and he left behind And though he couldn't see I gained the world, what I lost was me I met an old man and I heard him say I wish I knew then what I know today Say my heart wouldn't go so fast Tell the young man that he was my past And the heart he left behind Will soon be the thing that he tries to find And when, no, oh yes, when he sees Say I gained the world, what I lost was me Yeah, I gained the world, what I lost was me Life can be so hard 
Said he walked this mile. Said, keep coming, don't you turn astray. And never ever trade your love away. Cause then you'll find the key. Love is the one who has set you free. And in no yes, in the end, you'll see. Say, I lost the world, what I found was me. Yeah, I lost the world, what I found. Yeah, I lost the world, lost the world, yes, I lost the world. Lost the world, lost the world, yes, I lost the world. Lost the world, lost the world, yes, I lost the world. What I found was me. Yeah, I lost the world, what I found was me. 